Thanks for coming to help you guys. The sensors over here on Wayward Island should have a ton of intel about last night's earthquake. You called that an earthquake? It barely knocked over a lawn chair. But the next one could be disastrous. That's why the data is invaluable. It's like geological Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, that's where we found Ira, isn't it? Ira the caveman? That's right. He's out here somewhere. I wonder if he felt the quake last night. He might still use the cave as his shelter. Maybe we should check on him. Uh-oh. Get down! Just an aftershock. Everybody okay? What? <gasps> Unbelievable! Whoa. This is incredible. Um, Graham? Better look at this. I think we should get some help. Cybertronian, all right, but I've never seen one like it. It's ancient, way before our time. Looks like a cargo ship. It appears to have suffered some sort of collision, but with what? There are two bots inside who would know for sure. You know, um, maybe we should come back later. Those guys have been in here forever. What's a few more years? I see why this thing didn't show up on our Energon scanners. Must have been running on fumes. So these Autobots must be the ones I met in prehistoric days. But why would they land, save some cave people from meteors, then go to sleep? An excellent question, Francine. Perhaps their computer can shed some light on the matter. Then again, perhaps not. You know, airplanes have a black box that records everything that happens during a flight. Do Cybertronian ships have anything like that? The ship's primary memory core it should be right around here. It sustained some damage. Maybe Doc can help us recover the data and find out what happened. Or we could just ask these guys. There might be just enough power left. What? Cybertronians? Bots! I'm home! Home! Yes! Whoa. Yes, Whoa. yes, 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 I... yes! Oh, please don't. Um, what part of Cybertron is this exactly? It's not. You're still on Earth. Have been for a while. About 10,000 years. What? Don't worry. You haven't aged a bit. Salvage! Is he okay? Working on it. I'm Heatwave. This is my team. Blades, Boulder, and Chase. These are our friends, Graham, Cody, and Frankie. They're humans. Don't worry if you can't tell them apart. It takes a while. Humans, huh? Well, at least they got a little less hairy. Name's Blur. Fastest transport pilot in the galaxy and two-time winner of the Cybertronian 500. Oh, I have pictures somewhere. Uh, yeah, we'll take your word for it. But why land here? Well, me and Salvage, my loader, we got hit by a mega monstro meteor storm. I mean, big! But, uh, <laughs> I managed to land us in one piece. Then you must be the one who rescued the cave people. And saves Ira. Ira? He wasn't called Ira then. You probably knew him as Grrr, Or maybe just Ugg. Oh, okay, yeah, sounds right. Yeah, that's, that is just how it happened. Good work. You helped a lot of people that day. So 
Salvage! Blur? You made it! You're okay! We're... we're still on Earth? Oh, uh, yeah, um, listen, I, I know things might have looked... What happened? I can't remember anything after the crash. You can't? Your stasis pod was damaged. It might have caused memory loss. So, you don't remember me saving you and the cavemen? <laughs> oh, trust me, I was amazing. Aftershock! Blur, Blades, grab the kids. Everyone out. Now! <laughs> Salvage, get out! Now! <laughs> My ship. Whoa, you are fast. I just wanted to get out of there. Uh, you know, to, uh, to, to make sure nobody else was in danger out here. You two are born rescue bots. You're gonna love Griffin Rock. Griffin where now? <laughs> this is where Earthlings keep their valuables? That's a recycling bin. People put things in there that they don't want anymore, but that still might be useful. So, anyone could take what's in here and use it. Somebody threw this away? Can I keep it? I kinda tinker with odds and ends. Uh, okay. I think I'm gonna like this place. The memory core? Why are you dragging that thing with us? We're hoping to find out exactly what happened to your ship. Guys, incoming transmission. Blur, salvage. Come on, you're gonna wanna hear this. Yeah, coming. I just spoke with Optimus Prime. He's coming from the mainland to meet us at the lab. Really? I'm meeting a Prime? It's quite an occasion. It's not every day we find new bots. It is good to see new faces. Salvage, sir. Name's Blur. Welcome to Earth. We have built a new home here, in partnership with humans. So can you. Love to, really, your primeness, but uh, it's a big galaxy. I got places to go, races to win. I recommend you give Earth a chance, Blur. It has more to offer than you realize. We are required to remain robots in disguise. Humans are not yet ready to accept aliens among them. That's supposed to, uh, get me to stay? At least consider scanning an Earth-friendly form. <sighs> Fine. So we can scan anything in here, and that's our new vehicle mode? That is correct, Salvage. All right! <laughs> I, for one, am starting to get the appeal of this planet. <gasps> that symbol. The same one on the treasure box. The recycle bin. Yeah, this truck collects those items and- I get it. A moving treasure chest. Oh, just think of all the stuff I could fit in there. While cargo room is important, there are other vehicles that would perhaps prove more practical for everyday use. <sighs> Remember, Chase, sometimes the vehicle chooses you. I think you've made an excellent choice, Salvage. Prepare to scan. Ha. It feels perfect. Can I try it out? I love it. Whoever thought I would... I mean, I mean, epic. <coughs> Not funny. I think I swallowed my swash plate. Hey, Hotshot, maybe you better take it down a notch. Hey, Captain, I'm just having a little fun. 
Everyone, gather round. Now that you both have new modes, I have discussed your status with Chief Burns. While your paths are always your own, the Chief and I are offering you the opportunity to stay here and train as Rescue Force recruits. What? An unexpected turn Sir. of events. Great! Whoa. Noble! Sir, I'd be honored. So... I'd get to keep these sweet wheels. All right, Earth! Run for cover! I knew it. Did you hear that? We're being replaced. Retired, sent out to pasture. Blades, I don't think... Next month, we'll be in the old bot's home. Uh-huh. Playing checkers and griping about the food. And we don't even eat. With all due respect, sir, those two aren't exactly rescue bot material. Especially Mr. Speed Demon. Which means they will require expert guidance. That's why I would like you and your team to train them yourselves. Us? Teachers? Seriously? Of course, sir, if those are your orders. Perhaps you can begin by helping them adjust to their new forms and surroundings. I'll take salvage. I know just where to start. <sighs> well, what do you think? Yahoo! <laughs> This goes here, yes. Let's see. <sighs> Can't believe people think this is junk. I'll find a use for all of it. Everything finds its purpose eventually. And Cody, thanks for bringing me here. Sure thing, Salvage. <sighs> what is that? Used to have one just like you. Hey, Roto up. Oh, good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm Chief Burns. This is Cade, Danny, and you've met Graham. Yeah, charmed. So, uh, where's the racetrack? Captain here said I could test my speed against his. A race car against a fire truck? That doesn't seem very fair. Which is why we're not racing on a track. We're racing on an obstacle course. Unless you're not up for it. Up for it? In the words of the great Alpha Trion, one, two, three, go! <laughs> Gotta be faster than that or we'll have to change your name to Stoplight! Yeah. But that was cheating. <laughs> Not if you win. Technically, no regulations forbid subterfuge in a training exercise. But still. <sighs> Rules. You know, those cave people I saved didn't waste time counting how many seatbelts I had. They just jumped in. You didn't have seatbelts back then. Or even a vehicle mode. I was just... It was a joke, okay? Oh, he's a million laughs, isn't he? Nice, huh? I made it out of scrap. Guys, it's Don. His car crashed into a crane at City Hall. Is he all right? I think so, but he's trapped in his car. Let's roll, team. We're coming too. You're not ready. This isn't rocket science. It's one human stuck under a crane. We well, won't get in the way, and it would be great experience. It is against normal protocol for a rescue team to refuse help. Uh, rescue bots and others. Roll to the rescue. Blur, wait. Wait, have you met me?
Well, you don't have to all congratulate me at once. Don't worry, Don. We have you. Hurry, they can't hold that thing forever. Let's get you to Dr. McSwain's. Can you walk? Lesson one through 30 in rescuing, don't leave the human in danger. Now get this car out of the way. Give about a nanocycle, will ya? Now get over here and help. The guy's safe, the car's out, just let it drop. The crane would then land directly on City Hall. Blur, I said now. All right, all right. We're too low. We need a better angle. More leverage. I have an idea, but I have to let go. Go for it! Cody, turn on that generator. Will do. Graham, give me a hand. because of your recklessness, Blur. I'm gonna be very, very angry. Really? Won't you be busy being crushed? What the? Whoa. He just built a unidirectional dynamic electromagnet out of junk. There's no such thing as junk. Right, Salvage? Well, that's it. Didn't think I'd be saying it, but this rescue goes to you. Gotta agree with Cap on that one. Couldn't have done it without you, buddy. Done what? Put humans in danger? You were doing that just fine on your own. What were you thinking? You abandoned that driver to save yourself. I, for one, was shocked, and remain so. I don't understand. How could you risk your life saving those cave people? But now... Because that was huge. Those were meteors. Th this is, uh, bad driving. And yeah, I did risk my life, and I got every single one of them off that island, all by myself. Blur, you know that is not the truth. Dr. Green was able to repair your ship's memory core. We discovered some troubling footage. Your ship was damaged in a meteor storm and landed on Wayward Island, as you said. But it was Salvage who decided to save the inhabitants. I remember now. You wanted to stay with the ship, but we couldn't. I couldn't leave those cave people behind. You said you'd help me build a raft to get them off the island, but one person went missing. And you said you'd find him. You promised me. But you didn't come back. I waited, and you didn't come. So I sent them off, went looking for you. Thought you might be in trouble. I found the missing caveman, but you were nowhere around. I gave him an amulet to protect him, and then... This is the security footage from the ship's bridge. Come on, come on! Get me off this rock! Blur, what are you doing? Salvage, uh, you're back. You were leaving without me? Sorry, you were slow and I, I didn't think you'd make it. <sighs> hey, Salvage, buddy, come on. We fought. It scared Ira. He ran off. Then the meteors started hitting the cave. All we could do was go back into stasis and hope for the best. That's what happened. You can't run away from this one. Look, I never said... Well, all right, yes, I did, but... <sighs> you got me, Cap. I know we were never really a team. You did your job, I did mine. But even so... <sighs> Salvage, I'm sorry. Really. Oh, yeah, I believe that. After some careful consideration, 
I believe we should not give up on Blur. But sir, you saw. He ran out on his partner. Those humans. He lied to us. The rogue does not even care about trying to fit in. If he really didn't care, he wouldn't bother lying. Wait, you're defending him? Heatwave, maybe Blur just needs more time. Like Savage says, sooner or later, everything finds its purpose. <laughs> I did say that, didn't I? I agree, Cody Burns. I have watched too many Cybertronians take the easy path over the right one. I would like to help Blur make the correct choice. And I still believe you are the one to help him, Heatwave. I have faith in both of you. But sir, I don't... I mean... I'll try not to let you down, sir. Looks like you get another chance, Hotshot. Not that I think you deserve it. He'll do great. I know he will. Right, Blur? Glad you think so, Cody. Me too, kid. Thanks. Last time on Transformers Rescue Bots. It's your team, Heatwave. Your decision. And I've made it. Blur has to go. What do you know? We do agree on something. Blur! Where'd he go? Blur! Wait! Incoming emergency alert. Who's there? I am Irvis, your empathically reactive voice interactive system. There's a situation in the Sigma launch hangar. Shall I play it for you on the monitor? No thanks. From now on, Earth problems are not my problems. Irvis, old pal, set coordinates for the Silicon Flats of Hydrus 4, where the racing is fast, the Energon is high grade, and the locals never need rescuing. So let me get this straight. We actually want to find Blur? He's supposed to be confined to quarters, not that he ever does what he's supposed to. The guy just can't toe the line. Perhaps due to his lack of toes. Servo can't pick up a scent anywhere. Maybe he's not on the island. But Blur told me he wasn't going to leave. Yeah, he's told us all lots of things. No one saw him board the ferry, and it's not like he can fly off the island. Ah! Whoa! Looks like I can't either. What was that? Ah. Whoa! Doc's been detecting some solar flare activity. When the radiation reaches our atmosphere, it can cause electromechanical problems. Whatever it is, it affects bots, too. Excuse me, Chief. I've never done that before, and I'm quite embarrassed. It's all right, partner. One more thing to keep an eye on. Cody, any blur sightings or power glitches to report? Cody? Where could he be? Hello? Anyone? I'm stuck down here! Oh, no. A routine patrol with four bots and stasis. He's like a poke in the strangest of places. Earth was their home now, and in addition, Optimus Prime gave them this mission. Learn from the human servant. Someone who can. Servo? What's wrong, boy? Maybe he wants us to follow him. Guys, key into Boulder's GPS and rendezvous. I'm not sure, but I think Servo's picked up a scent. What is it, 
servo? Did Blur come back here? There's nothing here, boy. Not up top, maybe. What about below? Guys! In here, I'm stuck! Hang on, son! Hurry! The catwalk's about to give way! I got this. How did you get in there? And as long as we're asking questions, where's our spaceship? Next thing I knew, Blur took off in the Sigma, and I was trapped. Grand theft, endangerment of a minor, and I would wager that Blur did not even buckle up before liftoff. He's reckless, all right. It's only a matter of time before somebody really gets hurt. I was hoping a little more time with us would turn him around. Looks like it turned him all the way around, right off Earth. Graham and I never even got to finish our upgrades to the Sigma. Whoa, whoa, what the hell what was that? Again? Whoa there. Maybe you should have upgraded the electricity first? Must be another solar flare. Unless Blur stole the fuse box, too. Hey, look on the bright side. It means we're finally rid of Mr. Look at Me Show Off. I just can't stand guys like that. What? Thank you for the status update, Heatwave. I will attempt to locate your ship and return it to you. If Blur hasn't already crashed it into some asteroid. I am disappointed that Blur was unable to learn to be a team player. But we cannot give up hope that he will learn someday. He only looks out for himself. I don't think that's ever gonna change. <sighs> Can I get a little peace and quiet in here? The beeps indicate more incoming alerts. I can switch to visual display if you like. <laughs> well, yeah, if that shuts him up. Cody? My empathic links are detecting concern in your vocal pattern. Shall I change coordinates to return to Earth? Uh, why did that kid have to get himself into trouble? Incoming update. Cody was successfully extracted by the rescue team. Your assistance was not needed after all. Maybe not, but still. Ah, just as well I didn't go back. One more thing for Heatwave to rub in my faceplate. I'm showing five unread messages from Optimus Prime. And I should also warn you about... Hey, who turned out the lights? You guys feel that? Like my insides just turned outside? Uh-huh. I've only felt something like this once before. Long time ago. Backup generator won't kick in. What's going on here? Based on the solar flares we've been experiencing recently, I'd say it's a CME. That stands for... Coronal, coronal mass, mass ejection. ejection. Sort of a super solar flare. Much more powerful than the ones we felt earlier. It disrupts electrical systems. And causes geomagnetic storms that affect everything, from radio signals to orbital satellites. So it shuts down all the power. Why can't you just say that? Chase, do you read? Comlinks are out too. We'd better get into town and see if it's caused any trouble. Are you guys okay? Our biomechanics took a big jolt from the CME. The effects are starting to wear off. <sighs> Some of our non-essential systems are still out. Lights, sirens. Which means we'll be out of touch and in the dark. So let's be extra careful out there. Dad, can Salvage and I come too? No point in staring at blank screens in the command center. All right. Keep an eye on him, Salvage. Chase and I will head out to docks and see what he knows about this. Everyone else, fan out and patrol the island. <sighs> rescue bots, roll to the rescue! You want me to fly? With no lights, no navigation? 
In my weakened condition? <coughs> Aw, it's okay. If you're too weak, I'll take the controls. I've been wanting to try a triple backwards loop, so... Feeling better already. Energon levels are coming back to normal. I'll be up to full throttle in no time. Uh-oh. I wish I could say the same for that plane. It's going down! The CME must have knocked out his navigation system. We have to help him land. We need to signal him. Are your lights working yet? No, my electrical's still down. I'll get his attention. Did I ever mention how flying backwards makes me nauseous? Just keep thinking about that sweet, safe ground. my rope collection this morning. 80 feet, reinforced nylon. Brace yourself, Captain! Boulder's suspicions are correct. The phenomenon was indeed a CME. Its effects seem to be waning, but it's difficult to determine when we'll have power again using only a calculator. Especially when it's running off a potato battery. This works much better with an Idaho russet. Much starchier, but I had that for lunch. Once my calculations are done, I'll cross-check the CME's trajectory on my telescope. Then we can use the battery for home fries. What's it gonna take to get away from this mud ball? In case of power loss, deploy restart lever. <laughs> Again with the beeps. Should warn you about an unidentified object rapidly approaching our flight path. Whoa! Object has now been identified as a communication satellite. Impact is imminent. Huh, tell me something I don't know. All right. You now have 10 unread messages from Optimus Prime. Forget that. Just take a piece of action now. Uh. What now? The satellite has been disabled by a coronal mass ejection. It's currently falling out of orbit and on a trajectory toward Griffin Rock, Maine. What? Griffin Rock, Maine. Oh, but, but it'll burn up before it crashes, right? Much of it may disintegrate upon re-entry, but some debris will hit the island. Estimating time of impact at... 30 minutes! Oh, my! For the power to come back on? That's not a bad wait. Uh, no! That's how long until that satellite comes crashing down on Griffin Rock! What? Doc, can we raise the island's protective dome? Not without an energy source. Though it would appear that some power is beginning to return. But nowhere near enough to raise the dome. At least my comm link's back up. I better alert the team. Listen up. We have a situation. A falling satellite is headed straight for Griffin Rock. We'll just go up in the Sigma. Oh, right. Wasn't enough Blur ditched us. He left us high and dry. We can point fingers later. For now, let's get everyone to shelter. Attention, citizens. Please proceed to the underground shelter. This is not a drill. Salvage. Shouldn't we be helping? I am helping. 
If I can boost the signal on our comlinks, I may be able to get a message to Blur. What good will that do? Blur's made it pretty clear he's not interested in helping us. I know everybody else has given up on Blur, but you know me. Some patience and a little tinkering. I like to give things a second chance. Or in Blur's case, maybe a seventh or eighth. <laughs> See? You haven't given up on him either. There. This transmitter can find Cybertronian radio frequencies, though it would work better on higher ground. How about Doc's lab? Irvis, what's the situation in Griffin Rock? No updates. Signals there have become too weak to transmit to space. Well, the other bots can handle it. The satellite wasn't my fault, so it's not my problem, right? I am not programmed to make judgments. I determine available options based on empathic input, but the current status of your feelings is unclear. Shall I resume course for Hydra's 4? Sir, shall I resume course? Sir, shall I resume course? Ah, forget it. It's their problem. Yeah, Irvis, resume course. They'd sure be surprised, though, if I rode in to save the day. Except for the kid. He wouldn't be surprised. Okay, but I'm not giving up on you. Someday, when the time comes, I know you'll do the right thing. Ah, oh, who am I kidding? Even if I wanted to, there's nothing I could do to help. Although... Just for discussion's sake, if I were to go back, does this ship have laser blasters? Affirmative. Boulder and Graham recently installed a new one. All right. Can't believe these words are about to leave my mouth, but... They don't need to, sir. I understand. Reverse course for Earth. We're gonna chase down that satellite and blast it out of the sky. Please proceed to the shelter, single file, in an orderly manner. Aim the laser. And... Fire! I said fire! Why won't it work? Boulder and Graham have yet to bring the new laser cannon to full functionality. Well, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? Your question was whether the ship was equipped with a laser cannon, not whether or not it worked. <sighs> Why is everybody against me? I have no internal data to answer that. Shall I search the internet? Even when I try to do the right thing, I mess it up somehow. Now what do I do? First of all, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Salvage? Blur, hang on, we'll get you some help. I'm patching you through to the others. Uh, hey guys. Well, if it isn't our hero, you sure have a lot of nerve. This frequency is for emergency personnel only. State your business, Blur. Look, I need to know how to get the Sigma's laser cannon online. Oh, why? Are you gonna come back and take a shot at us on top of everything else? Okay, I know I deserve that. I have a lot to answer for, but right now there's a satellite to take care of. Wait, 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 Blur is helping? Are you at the control console? There's a panel with a charging button and override switch. But we didn't get to finish our upgrade, so the laser's operating at only 10% capacity. Well then, I'll just have to fly in 10 times closer. But that'll put you right in the path of the exploding debris. It could destroy the ship, and you. Well, at least I won't have to come back and face Heatwave. Blur, you don't have to do this. Maybe we can figure out another way. Uh, sorry, Heatwave. Can't hear you. Uh... Signal's breaking up! Thirty seconds to satellite impact. Blur, you could do this. Five seconds to satellite impact. Four, three, two. Woo! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, sending. Hey, wise guy, you did it. Blur. The Sigma's gone. 
Poor Blur. Well, he wasn't the nicest guy in the world. But even he doesn't deserve that. Uh, I was wrong about Blur. He came through for the team in the end. He truly fulfilled the RescueBot pledge to serve and protect. Uh, one more thing. How do you turn off this cloaking device? I think the explosion triggered it. Blur? Uh, wait, never mind. Nope, I, I got it. I don't know whether to hug you or yell at you. Is there a third option? Yes, court martial for Grand Theft Spaceship. Hey, if I hadn't taken the ship, none of you would even be here. Feels good to help, doesn't it? I'm not sure. Never done it before. <laughs> if that's what I'm feeling, it's not bad. <laughs> You'll get used to it. So, think maybe I've earned another chance here? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I agree. But I have other plans for both Blur and Salvage. I have just learned what transpired. I am proud of you. Both of you. As I said, being a rescue bot is not a destiny, but a choice. I am glad you have made yours. Wave, you and your team have trained the new recruits well. Salvage and Blur have proven themselves fit to serve as rescue bots at another Earth location. What? Oh, I don't really? Did not see really? one coming. So I guess this is goodbye. You two noobs don't get off that easily. I'll be checking in on you for some long-distance supplemental training. Wow, something must be wrong with me, because uh. I'm actually looking forward to that. Good news, Chief. The effects of the CME have completely abated. The power station is about to come back online. We were just getting used to having you here. We go where we're needed, kid. We're rescue bots. And Cody, thanks for helping me earn this. Please be patient, citizens. You must take turns to make turns. Is the mayor handing out money or something? Something people like even better. A chance to be famous. That and recording contract. Today's the auditions for Griffin Rock Idol. And all these people are waiting in line to sing. <laughs> Real idols don't sing. Well, I don't. It's silly. Rescue work is no place for singing. What we do is serious. I like singing. I want to audition. Blades, I thought performing in front of people made you nervous. That's true. Okay, scratch the audition. I'll take the famous part, though. Hey, Frankie, here to try out? Later on when the line goes down, Daddy and I came to test a new invention in the auditorium. We're just going to sneak around the back. Bye for now. This is Huxley Prescott giving you an eyeful from my tower high above City Hall. Uh, here he comes. Uh, it, is that the mayor? All right, I, I just need to move a little so I can... Whoa! whoa. Ah. Oh. It, it, it's moving! Ah. A routine patrol with four bats and stasis. He's like a poke in the strangest of places. Earth was their home now and in addition. Optimus Prime gave them this mission. Learn from the human. you might want to postpone the auditions a bit while we clean up this mess. But, Chief, I... Hmm. That would give the mainland news crew more time to get here. Uh, folks, sorry to say, uh, 
Uh, we're going to have to postpone the Griffin Rock Idol auditions for another, uh, yeah, let's call it two hours. Good. Oh, I'm waiting long enough. Oh. Hey, Doc. Frankie? Ah, Cody. Glad you're here. Care to help us test my new device? I call it the Tone O Tuner. When anyone sings into the microphone, it keeps them on pitch automatically and instantaneously. I thought it could be useful for the auditions. But isn't it kind of like cheating? If everybody in the competition used a machine to help them sing better, how do you know who's really good and who isn't? See, Daddy? That's what I told him. If I'm gonna be Griffin Rock Idol, I wanna earn it. With my own voice. 100% me. Well, I'm sure I'll find a good use for this eventually. Pretty sure I will, too. Like winning a recording contract. Like Mother always says, it's not cheating if you win. Now the mayor will only talk to the mainland news crew. Sometimes I wonder why I gave up selling shoes. Thanks for the quick cleanup, team. I too am grateful. We now have sufficient time to plan the order of our presentation to Optimus. That's today? I'm not ready. And I already told you, I don't like being in front of large groups. It's not large blades. Blur, salvage, high tide, a few others. You'll be fine. But it's on camera! Well, I can help if you want, Blades. What's the presentation about? Optimus asked us to go over rescue basics with the new guys. I think I'll be okay. Heat wave, you and Boulder move the van. Did I just sing that? Okay, Don, step out of your sedan. Kate, why are you singing? Whoa, me too. I thought I'd seen everything in Griffin Rock, but this is new. This is new! We're singing. Something's not right. I'll give Doc a call. La, 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 la. If, if there's, there's an answer, he can find it. it. But what to not apply to Tell me something else. La, 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 la. I like this. Blaze, you're the only it. one. It has to be a simple la, explanation. La, 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 la. Oh, let me say it's this something This will make rescuing tough. Will it last long? Just an aberration. La, 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 la. Not that weird oh, after all. Right. It's Griffin Rock. Side paid, you could serenade. Hey, girls just love a man who sings. Good one, Danny. You get more funny daily. Hey, I laugh. You're not helping things. Stop singing. I'm not singing. All of us are singing. Remember, we're a team here. Listen up, team. We need to focus and do our jobs the best way that we can. Chief, I'm glad to get your call. This mysterious phenomenon seems to affect us all. Daddy, doesn't it seem kind of strange that on the very same day you invent a singing gizmo, the whole town becomes a cabaret? Oh, 
day. Maybe you're right, I hadn't thought of it that way. My tune has somehow started making music out of everything we say. Chief, Frankie has a theory, so if you'll just please sit tight. I'm looking into something, and I'm afraid she may be right. It's gone! It's out there somewhere, somehow forcing everyone to sing. Intriguing scientifically, but... Daddy, we have to find that thing! Uh, is this on? Hey, everybody! Been a change of plan. Optimus can't join us today. So we're gonna record this whole thing. Got that set up, Salvage? Yep, good to go. We're gonna put this in the archives for future use as well. Just think, everything you say will be recorded for posterity. Guys? Well, why aren't you guys saying anything? Hello? 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 I told you I'm not singing. Funny thing happened on the way to the station. Every conversation's now a song. Which just seems wrong. Not necessarily. The world is so full of things that thrill and amaze us. I could sing its praises all day long. Please, go on. There's so much to love and there's so much to see. From the tiniest ant to the mightiest tree. Wonders abound from the sky to the ground. That's what planet Earth means to me. Humans are strange, made of head and of heart. Though they might not make sense, sometimes that's the best part. Just enjoy what you see, take it in, simply be. That's what planet Earth means to me. This small human place in the middle of space. That's what this great Earth means to me. Wait, wait, uh, let me get this straight. You can't not sing? Well, I knew that time was weird, but... Heat wave? Why don't you and Kay tell us something about this teamwork you're famous for? Not funny. Ain't happening. <laughs> it's all about me. It's all about me, me, me. All about me. Not sure why this happened, why there's music in the air. Could be that machine kicked in, but I don't really care. I'm sure to win that contract now that I can say on key, did I mention? It's all about me, me, me. Chase, you were going to speak on the topic of uh, standard criminal codes and procedure? Wake me when he's finished. I have learned that local police codes traditionally start with 10, which means please pay attention and another number follows then. Like 42, a dog can play 3, 1, a perp who needs restraint, and 90 prowler on the loose, 6, 3, night hunting of a moose. It's, it's illegal, illegal to, to be out at night time hunting moose. If you find a car parked in the road, you then report 1052 or 1066. If you should find a snowmobile has gone askew, to 6 if there's a hooligan trespassing where they shouldn't have been, 5, 7 if by any chance someone requires an ambulance. If by some misfortune you should need an ambulance. 7, 4, send extra, please, 5, oh, Disturbance of a peace, one three bad weather coming in for nine and form the next of kin. Seven six a prison break, six two big trouble at the lake. I know you'd like to hear some more, but I'll sign off now with a big ten four. He's signing off now with ten four. He's I'm signing, signing off, off now, now with, with ten, ten four. four. Over and out. Educational and bouncy. Blades, you were going to tell us something about air rescues. He's a little shy. Is this the same Blades I met? He's asked me to fill in. What do I say? Whatever's in your head, say it your own way. First response needs air support, and I'm the one they call. Rescue or reconnaissance, I'm ready for it all. So I laugh. 
latch my helmet on, throttle back with engines loud. The rotors were the grounds a blur. I melt into the clouds and I fly, I fly. Sail above the rooftops and I fly, I fly. Like a bird I soar, yes I fly, I fly. Rainbow chasing, racing through the sky. The rest of life's just waiting for the next time I can fly. Excuse me. Yes I Actual flying, which I don't like much, you the see. Rest of life's just waiting While you're waiting for to you mind if I, I step fly. in to say a word or two. You may have heard I don't prefer being up that high at all. So many things that could go wrong. So long a way to fall, but pushing on, I'm lifting off. There's a job that must be done. Though I make a groan, I'm not alone. Danny makes it fun. And we fly, we fly. Sail above the rooftops. And we fly, we fly. Like a bird, we A bird that's kind of frightened. Danny and me racing through, through the sky. The rest of life's just waiting for. Couldn't disagree more, but I'm here if you need me. The, the next, next time we can fly. Well, we were hoping for something a little more specific, but thanks. Try this mainland news crew with your paltry paraphernalia. I'll boost this baby signal till they hear me in Australia. Welcome to my new segment, the news at noon. All the news that's fit to croon. In continuing developments, I'm still singing. Stop. Watch out! Ah. Whoa! Oh boy! What happened, Danny? What's going on? The glass just started shattering, the windows all came down. Calls are coming in, the same thing's happening all over town. The waves produced by Doc's device that make us sing this way Cause vibrations subatomically putting molecules in play Which makes surrounding neutrons all expand Bro, even when you sing this stuff, I still don't understand Could the damage get much worse? If the frequency advances Then let's get out and warn the town It's best we don't take chances Looks like this lesson's over, guys. Hate to miss the ending of The Caden Heatwave Show. You're rescue workers. Just get out there and do what you do best. So, wanna try or what? I'll try. Let's, Let's try. try. What do you say? Ready to rock this. Ready to rock and roll to the rescue. Roll to, roll to the rescue. Roll to, roll to the rescue. To serve and protect. What else would you expect? We're boss. Roll to, roll to the rescue. This map shows the emergencies in the order that they call. They seem to form a trail that leads straight to City Hall. Thanks, Cody. Roll to, roll to the rescue bus! Roll to, roll to the rescue bus! La 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 Everybody sings so well It's going to be a cinch I'm not so sure Our next contestant is Priscilla
I was ever singing. Yeah, me either. Now we can get so back to the glad that's over with. Noble. But I don't want to stop singing. Oh, that was fun. I mean, I don't want to stop singing. That was fun. La 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 la. Great rescue. Uh, still not sold on the singing. Like to hear you do better, Mr. Sit Back and Watch. Yeah. You ever sung your own theme song on a mission? No, but. Well, all right then. Guess we know who's coolest. I still don't understand how Huxley got a hold of my device. You mean I did this? But I had no idea it was back there. Dad, look what I found. This is from the City Hall security camera. Priscilla Pinch. Attention, please. Our city engineer has declared the building to be stable. So we'll pick up auditions right where we left off. Something tells me Priscilla just might get her comeuppance. It's all about me! 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 Um, uh, thank you, Miss Pinch. We'll uh, be in touch. Next, Francine Green. and gentlemen, we have found our Griffin Rock Idol! <laughs> wow, what a finish! I mean, <clears throat> keep on singing! Take your temperature, cause Griffin Rock has dolphin fever! Hello, everyone. I'm Huxley Prescott, and this is opening day of the Dolphin Wonder Festival. Sir, I had no idea Griffin Rock possessed this many licensed drivers. A lot of visitors, Chase. They come over on the ferry. First day of the festival is always like this. I must admit, I failed to see the appeal of watching identical sea mammals swim past the island. I just hope it turns out better than last year. Hardly any dolphins showed up. <laughs> the mayor resorted to wearing a dolphin suit to keep the tourists from leaving. He made little kids cry.
We're now here at the marina, where I spy with my little eye a glint of sunlight, a clump of seaweed, or maybe the first dolphin of the festival. on it. and rescue robots, only here in Griffin Rock. I'm Huxley Prescott. More cars. I really shouldn't be leaving. No, oh, go have fun, Dad. We'll be fine. We can take care of ourselves. Please stay! The last time Cade was in charge, he made us wax the garage floor. Nothing wrong with seeing your reflection when you look down. Well, my reflection. Don't worry, Chief. We can handle anything the festival or Cade can throw at us. I only wish I could accompany you to the Peace Officers Conference. It sounds most informative. Yeah, but always way too long. Nevertheless, please take copious notes. Kids, since Doc and Frankie are out of town, I've asked someone to keep an eye on things. That's code for babysitter, isn't it? Oh, believe me, he's no babysitter. Hello, family of heroes. Uncle Woodrow. Welcome back. I thought you were on safari. Wait, is this Grandpa's old convertible? <laughs> the old jalopy itself. He had some fun joyriding around in this old tuna boat, didn't we, Charlie? Uh, best car ever. Indeed. And how are my favorite humans and aliens? Explain on aliens, eh? A little louder. The rest of the island didn't hear you. What? You're still keeping that a secret around here? Yes, and so are you. Oh, gotcha. But hey, Cybertronians, let's chat later, huh? I want to hear more about your world and your culture. We'd love to. The festival will be keeping everyone plenty occupied. And I expect Cody and I will be running the joint, right? <laughs> Woodrow, we talked about this. <laughs> Just kidding, Charlie. I won't participate in the rescues. Hey, I'm not official. Did you bring us any cool gifts, Uncle Woodrow? From my safari? Dry roasted beetles. You can't eat just one. 
I'll take your word for it. Well, that's my cue. I'll see you all next week. Bye, Dad. We'll see be you fine, soon, Charlie. We'll you. Have fun, Dad. Since I can't be seen without a driver, I will be walking home. Care to join me, Cody? Nah, little chief is cruising it old school with his uncle, right? You bet. See you at home, Chase. Of course. Enjoy the jalopy ride. <laughs> This is Chase's spot. Ah, he won't mind. Besides, I need to get into the kitchen. I have big plans for dinner. Cool. What you fixing? Baked Hackle Louie. A little recipe I picked up in the Calliope rainforest. What's in it? A cornucopia of ingredients. But since you didn't have any eggs from the Wampoo Fruit Dove, I had to improvise. Yeah, smells like feet. Graham's feet. Tastes pretty good. Got a kick a to it. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Told you those roasted beetles were yummy. You're dripping oil, aren't you? This ought to be far enough. Now, let's get this over with. I have serious doubts these beacons will attract dolphins to the island, sir. The ad said they emit the whooshing sound of a swimming squid. Dolphins like squid. What could go wrong? You bought them at a flea market, Mayor. With a coupon. Look, it's this or you're wearing that dolphin costume. Um, let's check the directions. <laughs> check the directions. No need. The beacons are water activated. Yeah, with dolphins chasing these little wonders around the island, tourists will be here all week. <laughs> Says here to release one every 50 feet to avoid interference with boat operations. Time is of the essence, Mr. Alper. Come on. to school, Uncle Woodrow. Most of the time, I just take my hoverboard. No trouble at all, little chief. Gives me a chance to drive Chase. How you doing anyway, Chase? Fine, sir. Exactly how long will you and your car be in town? Emergency dispatch. Help! My yacht is on a collision course with the South Shore! <gasps> We're coming, Mr. Mayor. Team, the mayor's yacht is about to crash into the beach. We have to respond, Uncle Woodrow. Hot dog! I'm on a rescue! Rescue bots, roll to the rescue! Attention, please evacuate the beach immediately. Go, go! Hurry! Go, go, go! My balloon! It's moving way too fast! It looks like the yacht is gonna hit before you guys get here. Danny, listen. Remember the game you used to play with your dolls and toy boats down by the creek? Yeah, why bring that up? Blades can be the ramp. Be, be the, the what? what? Be the what? I think it'll work, Danny. Hurry. Oh, boy. What? Oh, boy. You know I don't like oh, boys. Drop into the surf blades and convert to bot mode. Oh. Now, fall forward and prop yourself up. Oh, boy. Ugh. All the hair-brained ideas. Hey, it worked. Here's... Someone is getting a medal for this. Hmm. 
Ow. 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 It's a water beacon, all right. Advertised as a dolphin lure. I wonder if the mayor was dropping those in the ocean. Wouldn't put it past him. Doesn't seem right making dolphins go where they don't want to. <laughs> and according to our own emergency responders, credit for this morning's daring rescue belongs to... Woodrow Burns! Good job, Uncle Woodrow! Yeah, I know. <laughs> Therefore, until the return of Chief Burns, I am naming Woodrow Temporary Acting Chief of Griffin Rock. I love Uncle Woodrow, but there's no way he's telling us how to do our jobs. Chief Woodrow, your reaction. <laughs> I'm speechless. Mayor, how about a few words? Though I am reminded of the time I was made Honorary tribal leader for the tree people of Tatui. I was then expected to jump into an active volcano as a sacrifice to the lava gods. Whoa! I guess Uncle Woodrow is now official. Chase, I'm ready. Uh, ready for what, sir? Well, what does Charlie usually do? The chief can often be found working in the command center typically not wearing someone else's clothing. Danny, some dolphin balloons are tangled in the wind turbines and... You know, Danny, once when trying to get coconuts from a tall tree, I used a high-powered crossbow and... Uh, thanks, Uncle Woodrow. We'll just climb up. Kate, reports of a grease fire in one of the festival food trucks. Whoa! Can't put water on a grease fire, Cade. Graham, get Boulder to bury the entire food truck with sand. What? We're equipped to handle grease fires, Unc. Thanks, though. <coughs> Uncle Woodrow, maybe you... Allow me. Emergency dispatch. What? Don't worry, I'll be right there. Take over, Cody. Chase and I are needed. A man's been trapped in a tree for over three hours. Poor Mr. Pennypaws. <laughs> but Uncle Woodrow... He's not a... he belongs to... I guess you'll figure it out. Clear. No breakfast. Oh, darn. I was looking forward to Uncle Woodrow's fried lizard tail omelets. I wonder where he is. Probably dabbing antiseptic on all the cat scratches he got from Mr. Pettypaws. <laughs> 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 Come on, guys. Un Uncle Woodrow, w w we didn't mean that... No, it's okay, kids. I, I know I get carried away. I guess... It just felt good being a part of this family. And don't worry, I'll stay out of the rescues. Well, nice one, guys. What? You're, You're the one who... Cade! Rescue team, we have an outright dolphin disaster on our hands. How can we have a festival of our main attractions a stranded up river in the wetlands? Those dolphins won't survive like that much longer. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue! Uncle Woodrow, come on! No, I promised to stay out of the way. Kay, Danny, and Graham were just goofing around. I'll be fine, Cody. But Chase needs a driver, right, Chase? That is correct, unless I want to walk, which I do not. <laughs> if you insist. Rescue bot, roll to the rescue! Uh, only Heatwave says that. Oh, sorry. Ah! 
For some reason, the dolphin swam upriver here, then doubled back down into the wetlands here. I don't get it. Why can't they just swim back out? I imagine they're scared and confused. That I get. More beacons. They must have made a wrong turn and ended up here. And the dolphins followed them. Such beautiful creatures. We have to do something. We will. Better hurry. Dolphins can easily overheat out of the water. We'll grab those beacons. But carry the dolphins over that berm to the river. The current will take them back out to sea. Got it. Let's move. Sorry about all this, fella. these dolphins free before we run out of time. Like we have other options. I do have an idea. Uh, no offense, Unc, but... We need to do something. Uncle Woodrow, what do you have in mind? Well, if we can raise the water level, I think I can convince the dolphins to leap back into the river on their own. Convince the dolphins? Yeah, I used to communicate with the species quite a lot while exploring the Marshall Islands. Well, even if you could, Uncle Woodrow, how would we raise the water? Good news is, the wetlands are drained by only two outlets. And all we'd have to do is block those up, right? I say it's worth a try. All right, let's do it. I would like to see a certain convertible jalopy do that. Heat wave? Bullhorn, please. This I gotta see. I'm a little rusty, but here goes. Come on, swim Just this way! Jump on over, dolphin! You can do it! The dams are failing. Ugh. Why isn't this working? I should have known better. Wait, Uncle Woodrow, you said you talked to the dolphins in the Marshall Islands. That's in the Pacific Ocean. Don't they have different dolphins there? Yes! I'm speaking Pacific white-sided dolphin, not Atlantic. <laughs> They're actually listening to him. I want to speak dolphin. Woodrow, don't ever think you're not part of this family. Only a Burns could pull something like that off. Now I see why people come out here to watch him. I want a dolphin. Well, maybe just one of those balloons? <laughs> the festival is saved! Uh, yeah, Mr. Alper, you can change now. Mmm, homemade pizza. The perfect welcome home feast. Thanks for fixing it, Woodrow. I love cooking for my family. Mm. 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 No hint mm. of feet at all. I realize my culinary choices are kind of unusual. Once you get past first impressions, they're not so bad, are they? <laughs> Maybe kind of like me. That's my brother, an acquired taste. Mmm, this really is good. And some people don't think bat milk cheese is very tasty. 
<laughs> Kidding! Ever try milking a bat? They're very moody. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't really bad milk cheese, is it? Yeah. Although I will have to clean up your oil spot, you have safeguarded your humans. For that, you have my respect. Take care of everyone, little chief. Bye, Uncle Woodrow. Thanks again. So long, Safe huh? travels. See the postcard. Someone please explain to me why we have to watch some Silly monster movie at the drive-in. It is freezing outside. Excuse me. Attack of Humongado is not just any silly monster movie. It's a kaiju classic, which means it was made to be seen in a drive-in, big screen, lots of snacks, and no talking! Nothing better than movie popcorn. Just be sure none of it falls under my seat. Sometimes old technology is the best. Watching on film, run through a projector. Yep. Makes you feel connected with the movie's history. <laughs> Ancient history. Look at how fake the monsters look. I've cleaned scarier stuff off of my windshield. <laughs> <laughs> Blades is lucky he doesn't have to go toe to toe with you, Mungado. His yellow belly would be the perfect target for a fireball. My belly's not yellow. It's sky blue, thank you very much. Guys, if you all don't stop bickering, you're gonna miss the movie. I, for one, have already lost the story subtext. Mr. Bunty, can we get some popcorn down here? Extra butter for an extra special movie? Picture. Fire! Rescue team, let's move! Everyone, please exit the outdoor cinema in an orderly fashion. Mr. Bunty is still inside the projection booth. Firebot, transform and give me a lift to the window. Mr. Bunty, we'll get you to a doctor. <sighs> Hard to tell there was even a fire. Good work, Cody. All right, ready for the roof. Thank you. The old girls never looked better. Wish I could say the same for my projector. Sorry, Mr. Bunty. Constructing a film projector from scratch is a little outside our wheelhouse. But not mine. I've brought a little gift. 
Using the same technology as the imaging chamber, I've created a holomorphic projector. It recalibrates the polarized light from any regular two-dimensional movie, converts it using the hollow lens, trademark pending, and voila, a holographic movie. You mean the monsters can stomp around in the audience? They'll look close enough to grab your popcorn. Sweet. Hey, Doc, if I could find another print of Humongado, do you think we can screen it? Indubitably. And it will look more lifelike than you could ever imagine. As soon as I get this reel threaded, we'll test Doc's new hologram lens for tomorrow's grand reopening. I knew we could count on our fellow Humunga dorks. Track down this new print in no time. They threw in the sequels for nothing. Hmm. Exactly what they're worth. Ready? Wait. Cannot watch Kaiju without Nachos Del Cain. Hurry! You're missing Ravenous! And now, holographic Ravenous! <laughs> wow! Noble! Oops! Uh-oh. Now look what you've done. You blew a fuse. It's not a total loss. Mmm. Are those nachos or are those nachos? I'm telling you guys, you missed out. The monster looked so real, it was like, it was right there in front of you. Thanks. I've had all I can take of movie monsters for a while. You just don't like any movie without kissing or stunt flying. And don't forget cute little animals. What's more awesome than bunnies singing show tunes? Griffin Rock Emergency. A what? All right, Mayor, we'll be right there. A monster's munching the Mayor's mansion. And no, I will not repeat that. Probably another raccoon, but let's go check it out. Cody, command center. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue. running loose in Griffin Rock. Is there any other place that could happen? It must have something to do with Doc's holomorphic projector. Whatever its origins, we have to bring it down immediately. Have to is a strong phrase. Why don't we just let it fly away? Maybe to another island where we aren't? Don't worry, I got this, Blue Belly. I told you, it's sky blue. as if it couldn't get any creepier. We'll need to go after him. Cody, can you find a map of the tunnels under the mayor's house? Checking the database. Or we could not follow a creepy monster into a deep, dark tunnel. I'm just saying, we have options. <sighs> no one ever wants to listen to the options. In the movie, Ravenous's eyes are his weak spot. Hit him with a beam of light, it temporarily knocks him out. All right, team, let's split up. We'll each take a quadrant. Ah, good ravenous. Good creepy thingy. saying before, Blades, about picking scary stuff off your windshield? Yeah! Ah! Why me every time? There are others in the room, you know? Ah! 
Cody, call up Doc Green and tell him to meet us at the drive-in. Let him know we've got a movie monster who's ready to go home. I believe a power fluctuation caused the lens's photonic component to overload. The surge of energy turned the hologram of Ravenous into a solid creature, an embodiment of the movie monster, complete with the original's instincts. Doc, how do we send it back? Daddy and I hooked up a dynamo pack to duplicate the conditions of the power surge. When the power reaches critical level, we'll reverse polarity. Which should return the solid creature to its holographic state, which we can then send back into any moment of the movie. Like so. Oh dear. That wasn't in the plan. Find it, quickly. Uh-oh, that music usually means Guess what we're doing tonight. Whoa, watch out! Take cover! Downtown. Doc, we need to go after Humongado. Can you handle Ravenous? Now that he's caged, he shouldn't be any trouble. Uh, of course, Chief. And once I fix the projector, I'll send him straight back into his movie. really hate dinosaurs or billboards dinos everybody knows that from the second sequel where humongado and ravenous team up to fight the supersaurus that's it Cade. you're a genius yeah but well, why now especially dad if the bots turn dino maybe humongado will go after them and not the town it's worth a try no one on the street so rescue bots mind going prehistoric You heard him. Let's let Big Scaly know the Dinobots are back in town.
Doc's having better luck than we are. That should do it. Now to send Ravenous back onto Celluloid, where he belongs. The sooner the better, Daddy. I don't think he likes being cooped up. Just a little more power, and we'll be able to reverse polarity. Sounds like Ravenous' is homing call. Mungadol must still want a piece of him. Then why not give old Fire Breath the opportunity? Use Ravenous' bait. A sound strategy. Lead Humungado straight to the outdoor cinema. And send him back into the movie. Movie? Try Blockbuster? And the two differ how? Enough to give those two something to fight about. Doc, how's it going with Ravenous? Well, uh, we've had a bit of a complication. Ravenous is broken free and is wow! Making rather a nuisance of himself. I don't suppose you could come and get us out of here! Frankie, are you near the Jeep? It's not really in driving condition. No, the lights. It'll take him down. Aim at his eyes. <sighs> Apparently, all it requires is a light touch. Nice going, Daddy. Thanks, Cody. Danny, Blades, you two pick up Ravenous. We'll hold Humongado here until you return. Of course, because Ravenous and I get along so well. I'll stop complaining. He's just another piece of cargo. Seriously, Danny, we'll meet you back at the drive-in. And stay outside the city. This guy's not in a good mood. Thanks for the advice, guys. I think we can handle it. Drop Ravenous directly in front of the screen. You heard him, Danny. Almost there, Blades. Just stay a little ahead of him. Easy for you to say. Yeah! Your rear end is not on fire. We're hit. We're going down. Blades, Danny, talk to me. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. He barely missed my swashplate. <laughs> Ravenous is loose again. That's good. They'll keep each other busy fighting. Doc, roll him to the rescue. Just another few minutes. Um, I thought you said they'd fight each other. He also said they teamed up to fight the Supersaurus. And the Rhinoctopus. And now apparently, us! So before, when Humongado was attacking the box Ravenous was in, he was trying to free him? These guys are friends? No way. That just makes a lot of sense, actually. And we are their common enemy. Chief, you have to keep them contained within the holographic field. OK, Spike Gut. Enough is enough. I've had it with you. Don't have anything nice to say? Don't say anything! We only have 
one shot at this. We need both creatures inside the field. Where's Blades? what the sequel should have looked like. <laughs> I think maybe you'd better retire that lens, Doc. Or only use it on cute little animal movies. Humongado and Ravenous, friends. This adds a whole new layer of meaning. I'll have to rewatch the entire series. But the two creatures fight as well. How can they be friends? Just like a few humans I know, not mentioning any names, Danny and Kate. Us? How about you and Heatwave? Oh, Heatwave and I don't. We don't. Actually, I guess we do. Yeah, you're right. Okay, tomorrow night, we screen Humongado and all the sequels, this time without Doc's special lens. Who's up for it? I guess I'll call Bunty. Thanks, guys. Means a lot more with all of you here. That's what family does. We can still complain too, right? Because it hasn't gotten any warmer. And where are the cute little animals? Heatwave, you told me th <laughs> Whew. I know breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but does it have to come so early? But if it came later, it would be lunch, Graham. It's not rocket science. Actually, cooking is science. It deals with chemistry, physics. Changing the channel. Yeah, check out the Burnt Toast Network. I like it well done. Oops. <laughs> Eight o'clock, Cody. Wouldn't be a bad idea to leave for school a little early. It'll be hectic this morning with the new clock tower dedication. Sure thing, Dad. Guys. Hey, Cody. What's that you have? A pocket watch. It was in the lost and found for a while, so Deputy Barney let me have it. But what if the actual owner comes looking for his or her misplaced bobble? Then I'll give it back. It looks so old. Definitely low tech. That's what I like about it. It reminds me of the past, when things were simpler. Cody's right. Technology is great when it can help, but sometimes it starts controlling us. We're headed down to the dedication, so how about a ride to school, son? Feels like we haven't talked in ages. No thanks, Dad. I want to walk. Hmm. Used to be you'd want to ride with me every morning. You kids grow up too fast. Sometimes I wish I could go back in time and keep you a little forever. Well, most of you. Frankie, wait up! Whoa! Watch where you're... Those two are sure in a hurry. Hi, Cody. Hello, Frankie. Hi, Mr. Harrison. Morning. Heading down to the clock dedication. <laughs> His rotor's bent. above Mrs. Niederlanders. Let's go, team. He won't hold still. I'll 
make him come to you. Oh, that squirrel came out of nowhere. Stop chasing those squirrels, Mr. Pettipaws. You caused a lot of trouble. Hey, Dad, looks like I might need that ride to school after all. <laughs> you okay? I'm fine, thanks. Morning, class. We'll be taking a field trip today to see the dedication of the clock tower. But first, a pop quiz. The new clock is run by a Magno Fusion power core. It'll sync up every time telling device in Griffin Rock. Not this one. All I have to do is wind it. Cody, watch winding is so 19th century. Huh. That squirrel really gets around. Good morning, friends and citizens. As the old saying goes, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> is this on? Yeah. But our town's timepiece, now with state-of-the-art technology, continuously tells perfect time down to the millisecond. It's always right. Area closed for clock dedication. Please turn around, citizen. Citizens of Griffin Rock, I'm happy to present to you the newest addition to our already thriving town, the Mayor Lusky Clock Tower. <laughs> Are you all right, Mrs. Rubio? Reminder for future civic events. A few well-placed detour signs could prevent much trouble. My dedication is ruined! No one was hurt, and probably your most memorable speech ever. You're welcome. Are you okay, son? I'm fine, Dad. What? Ooh, I know breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but does it have to come so early? <sighs> Was I dreaming? Graham. It is not rocket science. Actually, cooking is science. It deals with chemistry, physics... Changing the channel. Yeah, check out the Burnt Toast Network. I like it well done. Oops. <laughs> Eight o'clock, Cody. Wouldn't be a bad idea to leave for school a little early. It'll be... Hectic, because of the new clock tower dedication. Huh, you read my mind. Guess you know me pretty well, huh, son? Everything okay? I'm not sure. How can it be 8 o'clock again? Hey, Cody. It's my pocket watch, Boulder. I got it from Deputy Barney. I was just going to ask that. I know. Something weird is happening. I've experienced all this before. In a few seconds, my family will come down and my dad will ask me if I need a ride. Cody, you need a ride to school? No thanks, Dad. I'll walk. You kids grow up so fast. If only, only I, I could go, go back, back in time, time and, keep and keep you a little, little forever. forever. Dad, I think I just did go back in time. Back in time? What exactly do you mean, Cody? You came from the future? 
No. Well, sort of. It's just, I've been through all of this before. You mean, like, déjà vu? Déjà who? <laughs> déjà vu. It's a French term. It means already seen. When you feel like something's happening that you already lived through before, it's called déjà vu. Oh, I get it! No, I don't. Oh, like arguing with Heat Wave. Seems like that happens over and over. Unfortunately, that's real. It's not just a feeling. It's real events. Like toast burning, coffee spilling, even Dad telling me he wants to keep me little forever. Haha, <laughs> okay. If you've been through all this before, what are tonight's winning lots of bucks numbers? I don't know. It was only this morning, just the last hour or so. Well, next time you time travel, get some useful information, huh, bro? Actual time travel would have required some type of machine or portal. And there's nothing like that in this situation. You believe me, don't you, Dad? I believe you feel like you've been through all this. If you're worried, Cody, I think we should go talk to Doc Green. That's okay. I think it's all over now anyway. All this seems new. Danny's right. It was probably just deja vu. Or maybe even a dream. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. Thanks, Dad. Cody, maybe you didn't really time travel. But just to be on the safe side, is there anything we should know that might help in the next hour? After all, all tools are helpful in keeping the town safe, even unproven psychic phenomena. Thanks for believing me, guys. Well, maybe you should just come with me. Hey, Cody. What's going on? Just a little preventive maintenance. Hang on to him, Chase, until Mr. Harrison flies by. He is flying pretty low. Just like Cody said he would. Yeah, weird. Oh, I guess everything's okay. Stopping Mr. Pettypaw seemed to take care of it. Cody, anything else we should know? Later, at the clock dedication, a toolbox is going to fall, and a fire hydrant is going to blow. We'll make sure they don't. Uh, you want to tell me what's going on? Um, later. After Timmy's books and the pop quiz. Pop quiz? Hey, Timmy, watch out! Don't turn that corner. You're going to... Never mind. Morning, class. We'll be taking a field trip today to see the dedication of the clock tower. Yeah! But first, a pop quiz. How do you know all this stuff? I've already been through this whole morning before. I think I traveled back in time. <gasps> that is so cool. We have to tell my dad. You actually believe me? Hello, we live in Griffin Rock. Let's finish the quiz, then ask Mr. Schulte if we can go see my dad. After all, it is a matter of town safety. Or it could be. Note to self, do not add red algae puree, try green kelp paste instead. Hi, Dad. Hello, you two. I'm testing a new energy drink. And uh, shouldn't you be in school? We have an emergency. Cody's experiencing the same morning all over again. We need to help him figure out what's going on. Fascinating. Tell me everything, Cody. Well, it started at breakfast. Then, Mrs. Rubio's car ran into the clock tower. And that's when I was sent back to the beginning of the morning. You seem to be experiencing a random distortion in the temporal continuum perhaps caused by a nucleoelectric anomaly. You're traveling back in time. That's what I thought, but how? And why only me? Could it have something to do with the clock tower being hit? It does run on magnofusion technology. Precisely what I was thinking. But Cody's right. We have to figure out why this time jump is happening only to him and not to the rest of us. Because I don't remember having this conversation before. Uh, or uh, did I? Hmm. Um, not with me. Well, we'd better head down to the clock tower dedication and warn the rescue team. If we can prevent the car from hitting the tower and damaging the magnofusion battery, Cody should be safe. Fire hydrant is secure. 
Oh, thanks. Forgot about that. Just keeping you safe, citizen. Is there anything else we should be aware of, Cody? Keep an eye out for Mrs. Rubio. A detour sign or two may help. Excellent idea. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Schulte. We took care of everything. Well, he's right on time. Wonder where he's going. Good morning, Griffin Rock. As the saying goes, even a broken clock... clock is right twice a day. <laughs> but our town's timepiece, now with state-of-the-art technology, continuously tells perfect time. I see Mrs. Rubio. She's headed this way. Should be fine, but track her just in case. To our already thriving town, the Mayor Lusky Clock Tower! No sign of trouble. She's passing the crowd. Are you unharmed? Please drive carefully and avoid crowds. Don't know how you did it, Code, but you saved the day. Thanks for helping, guys, and for trusting me. Well, looks like you're safe. This time, nothing happened to the clock tower. I know breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but... Does it have, have to, to come, come so early? early? <sighs> Round three. Dude, what are you doing? Making sure you don't burn toast. I am insulted by that! I put out fires, I don't start them. Uh, thanks. I was just about to grab that. Don't worry, Dad. I won't be late, I don't need a ride, and yes, I'm growing up fast. Whoa. I was just going to... I know. But listen, we need to see Doc Green right now, with a stop at Mrs. Niederlander's first. I'll explain on the way. Don't add red algae puree. It'll make your energy drink bubble over. Use the green kelp paste instead. But how did you know I was... Same way he knew about Mr. Pettipaws and Mr. Harrison. He's psycho. I think you mean psychic, and he's not. Uh, seems like I've told this story a lot already, but... This morning, I came out for breakfast, and that's when I went back for the second time. So, the solution I suggested uh, before no longer makes sense. It must not be the car hitting the clock that's sending you back, but something else damaging the magnofusion battery. Cody, do you remember anything else going on with the clock? No, but I couldn't really see everything from where I was. Well, whatever it is, it always happens precisely at 9 a.m. Doc said the battery casing should be somewhere on the observation deck. Oh, oh nothing to be afraid of, Graham. It's not that high. It's not the height that bothers me. Mainly, it's just ladders. It's totally safe, and a lot more fun than going up the stairs. Wait, there are stairs? <laughs> what is your rescue team doing? They're ruining my dedication. No, Mayor, they're saving your dedication. Just give your speech, and I'm sure everyone will be so mesmerized, they won't even notice my team. Ah! Yes, yes, uh, you're right. <clears throat> Good morning, friends and citizens. As the old saying goes, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> but our town's timepiece now with state-of-the-art technology... Just a precaution, Mrs. Rubio. Would you mind parking here until the dedication is over? It's always right. I think I found the battery. That's the cannon pinion. Nuts! No, I'm sure it's the cannon. No, look! Nuts! That's it, Kate. That's the battery casing. Well, yeah. Good thing I'm here. Not sure where the peanuts came from, but... Cody, just found the battery. Actually, I found it. And everything looks fine. Perimeters are secure. Everything appears to be in order. 
Thanks, Chase. Maybe the problem is solved. Let's hope so. Why don't you go join your class? I'll explain things to your teacher. Where have you been? You missed up. Pop quiz, I know. Don't worry. I already took it. Twice. <laughs> that little guy sure is persistent. He runs up there... every time! The squirrel! Down to the millisecond! It's always right! Where's Cody going? I don't know. We already told him we handled everything. You! You're the one! Stop! Stop! Get away from there! You're going to hurt yourself! And the clock, and... Cody, are you all right? Where did you go? I'm at the top of the clock tower, Dad, and everything's fine. you at my back. Next time, stay on the safe side of the safety rail, okay? You okay, son? It worked! I'm still here! Mm, the squirrel chewing through the wire made the Magno Fusion battery momentarily surge. That caused the time jolt that kept sending Cody back. No matter how you tried to change things, Cody, the squirrel had the last word. But I still can't figure out why Cody was the only one affected. Me either, but low-tech or not, I'm sticking with my old-fashioned watch. You may have to wind it, but it won't yank you through time. Did you just get that? Yeah, I just started using it this morning. You don't think? Maybe I should have Daddy take a look at this. Morning, Cody. How are you doing? Happy to be here on this beautiful new day. It is a new day, right? It'd be hard to tell from Cade. He burns toast every morning. And yet your jokes always seem fresh. You know, Dad, I was thinking maybe you could drive me to school today so we can catch up. I'd like that, son. You were right, Cody. I just came from Doc's. This isn't an ordinary pocket watch. It contains the same type of crystal as the one from the time portal in the lab. That's why I was zapped back in time? Yep. The energy disruption in the clock tower battery interacted with this crystal. The watch became a mini time machine. And it took me back to the exact time I wound the watch. This came from Deputy Barney? From the Lost and Found. Dad, look! Well, now we know who lost it. Gone but not forgotten. Dr. Morocco. Last time on Transformers Rescue Bots. <laughs> It's your team, Heatwave. Your decision. And I've made it. Blur has to go. What do you know? We do agree on something. Blur! Where'd he go? Blur! Wait! Whoa! Incoming emergency alert. Who's there? I am Irvis, your empathically reactive voice interactive system. There's a situation in the Sigma launch hangar. Shall I play it for you on the monitor? No thanks. From now on, Earth problems are not my problems. Irvis, old pal, set coordinates for the Silicon Flats of Hydrus 4, where the racing is fast, the Energon is high grade, and the locals never need rescuing. So let me get this straight. We actually want to find Blur? He's supposed to be confined to quarters, not that he ever does what he's supposed to. The guy just can't toe the line. Perhaps due to his lack of toes. <laughs> Servo can't pick up a scent anywhere. Maybe he's not on the island. But Blur told me he wasn't going to leave. Yeah, he's told us all lots of things. No one saw him board the ferry, and it's not like he can fly off the island. Ah! Whoa! Looks like I can't either. What was that? Ah. Whoa. 
Doc's been detecting some solar flare activity. When the radiation reaches our atmosphere, it can cause electromechanical problems. Whatever it is, it affects bots too. Excuse me, Chief. I've never done that before, and I'm quite embarrassed. It's all right, partner. One more thing to keep an eye on. Cody, any blur sightings or power glitches to report? Cody? Where could he be? Hello? Anyone? I'm stuck down here! Oh, no. A routine patrol with four bats and stasis. He's like a remote in the strangest of places. Earth was their home now, and in addition, Optimus Prime. Someone who can. Servo? What's wrong, boy? Maybe he wants us to follow him. Guys, key into Boulder's GPS and rendezvous. I'm not sure, but I think Servo's picked up a scent. Servo? Did Blur come back here? There's nothing here, boy. Not up top, maybe. What about below? Guys! In here, I'm stuck! Hang on, son! Hurry! The catwalk's about to give way! I got this. You're safe. What happened? How did you get in there? And as long as we're asking questions, where's our spaceship? Next thing I knew, Blur took off in the Sigma, and I was trapped. Grand theft, endangerment of a minor, and I would wager that Blur did not even buckle up before liftoff. He's reckless, all right. It's only a matter of time before somebody really gets hurt. I was hoping a little more time with us would turn him around. Looks like it turned him all the way around, right off Earth. Graham and I never even got to finish our upgrades to the Sigma. Whoa, what the hell was that? Again? Whoa there. Maybe you should have upgraded the electricity first? Must be another solar flare. Unless Blur stole the fuse box, too. Hey, look on the bright side. It means we're finally rid of Mr. Look at Me Show Off. I just can't stand guys like that. What? Thank you for the status update, Heatwave. I will attempt to locate your ship and return it to you. If Blur hasn't already crashed it into some asteroid. I am disappointed that Blur was unable to learn to be a team player, but we cannot give up hope that he will learn someday. He only looks out for himself. I don't think that's ever gonna change. <sighs> Can I get a little peace and quiet in here? The beeps indicate more incoming alerts. I can switch to visual display if you like. <laughs> well, yeah, if that shuts him up. Cody? My empathic links are detecting concern in your vocal pattern. Shall I change coordinates to return to Earth? Uh, why did that kid have to get himself into trouble? Incoming update. Cody was successfully extracted by the rescue team. Your assistance was not needed after all. Maybe not, but still. Ah, just as well I didn't go back. One more thing for Heatwave to rub in my faceplate. I'm showing five unread messages from Optimus Prime. And I should also warn you about... Hey, 
Who turned out the lights? You guys feel that? Like my insides just turned outside? Uh-huh. I've only felt something like this once before. Long time ago. Backup generator won't kick in. What's going on here? Based on the solar flares we've been experiencing recently, I'd say it's a CME. That stands for Coronal, Coronal Mass Ejection. Ejection. Sort of a super solar flare. Much more powerful than the ones we felt earlier. It disrupts electrical systems. And causes geomagnetic storms that affect everything, from radio signals to orbital satellites. So it shuts down all the power. Why can't you just say that? Chase, do you read? Comlinks are out too. We'd better get into town and see if it's caused any trouble. Are you guys okay? Oh, our biomechanics took a big jolt from the CME. The effects are starting to wear off. Some of our non-essential systems are still out. Lights, sirens. Which means we'll be out of touch and in the dark. So let's be extra careful out there. Dad, can Salvage and I come too? No point in staring at blank screens in the command center. All right. Keep an eye on him, Salvage. Chase and I will head out to docks and see what he knows about this. Everyone else, fan out and patrol the island. <sighs> rescue bots, roll to the rescue. You want me to fly? With no lights, no navigation, in my weakened condition? <coughs> Aw, it's okay. If you're too weak, I'll take the controls. I've been wanting to try a triple backwards loop, so... Feeling better already. Energon levels are coming back to normal. I'll be up to full throttle in no time. Uh-oh. I wish I could say the same for that plane. knocked out his navigation system. We have to help him land. We need to signal him. Are your lights working yet? No, my electrical's still down. I'll get his attention. Did I ever mention how flying backwards makes me nauseous? Just keep thinking about that sweet, safe ground. my rope collection this morning. 80 feet, reinforced nylon. Brace yourself, Captain! Boulder suspicions are correct. The phenomenon was indeed a CME. Its effects seem to be waning, but it's difficult to determine when we'll have power again using only a calculator. Especially when it's running off a potato battery. This works much better with an Idaho russet. Much starchier, but I had that for lunch. Once my calculations are done, I'll cross-check the CME's trajectory on my telescope. Then we can use the battery for home fries. What's it gonna take to get away from this mud ball? In case of power loss, deploy restart lever. <laughs> Again with the beeps. Should warn you about an unidentified object rapidly approaching our flight path. 
Object has now been identified as a communication satellite. Impact is imminent. Huh. Tell me something I don't know. All right. You now have ten unread messages from Optimus Prime. Forget that. Just take a piece of action now. Uh. What now? The satellite has been disabled by a coronal mass ejection. It's currently falling out of orbit and on a trajectory toward Griffin Rock, Maine. What? Griffin Rock, Maine. Oh, but, but it'll burn up before it crashes, right? Much of it may disintegrate upon re-entry, but some debris will hit the island. Estimating time of impact at... 30 minutes! Oh my! For the power to come back on? That's not a bad wait. Uh, no! That's how long until that satellite comes crashing down on Griffin Rock! What? Doc, can we raise the island's protective dome? Not without an energy source. Though it would appear that some power is beginning to return. But nowhere near enough to raise the dome. At least my comm link's back up. I better alert the team. Listen up. We have a situation. A falling satellite is headed straight for Griffin Rock. We'll just go up in the Sigma. Oh, right. Wasn't enough Blur ditched us. He left us high and dry. We can point fingers later. For now, let's get everyone to shelter. Attention, citizens. Please proceed to the underground shelter. This is not a drill. Salvage. Shouldn't we be helping? I am helping. If I can boost the signal on our comlinks, I may be able to get a message to Blur. What good will that do? Blur's made it pretty clear he's not interested in helping us. I know everybody else has given up on Blur, but you know me. Some patience and a little tinkering. I like to give things a second chance. Or in Blur's case, maybe a seventh or eighth. <laughs> See, you haven't given up on him either. There. This transmitter can find Cybertronian radio frequencies, though it would work better on higher ground. How about Doc's lab? Irvis, what's the situation in Griffin Rock? No updates. Signals there have become too weak to transmit to space. Well, the other bots can handle it. The satellite wasn't my fault, so it's not my problem, right? I am not programmed to make judgments. I determine available options based on empathic input, but the current status of your feelings is Unclear. Shall I resume course for Hydra's 4? Sir, shall I resume course? Sir, shall I resume course? Ah, forget it. It's their problem. Yeah, Irvis, resume course. They'd sure be surprised, though, if I rode in to save the day. Except for the kid. He wouldn't be surprised. Okay, but I'm not giving up on you. Someday, when the time comes, I know you'll do the right thing. Ah, oh, who am I kidding? Even if I wanted to, there's nothing I could do to help. Although... Just for discussion's sake, if I were to go back, does this ship have laser blasters? Affirmative. Boulder and Graham recently installed a new one. All right. Can't believe these words are about to leave my mouth, but... They don't need to, sir. I understand. Reverse course for Earth. We're gonna chase down that satellite and blast it out of the sky. Please proceed to the shelter, single file, in an orderly manner. Aim the laser. And fire! I said fire! Why won't it work? Boulder and Graham have yet to bring the new laser cannon to full functionality. Well, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? Your question was whether the ship was equipped with a laser cannon, not whether or not it worked. <sighs> why is everybody against me? I have no internal data to answer that. Shall I search the internet? Even when I try to do the right thing, I mess it up somehow. Now what do I do? First of all, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Salvage? Blur, hang on, we'll get you some help. I'm patching you through to the others. Uh, hey guys. Well, if 
it isn't our hero. You sure have a lot of nerve. This frequency is for emergency personnel only. State your business, Blur. Look, I need to know how to get the Sigma's laser cannon online. Oh, why? Are you gonna come back and take a shot at us on top of everything else? Okay, I know I deserve that. I have a lot to answer for, but right now there's a satellite to take care of. Wait, 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 Blur is helping? Are you at the control console? There's a panel with a charging button and override switch. But we didn't get to finish our upgrade, so the laser's operating at only 10% capacity. Well then, I'll just have to fly in 10 times closer. But that'll put you right in the path of the exploding debris. It could destroy the ship, and you. Well, at least I won't have to come back and face Heatwave. Blur, you don't have to do this. Maybe we can figure out another way. Uh, sorry, Heatwave. Can't hear you. Uh, signal's breaking up. seconds to satellite impact. Blur, you could do this. Five seconds to satellite impact. Four, three, two, Standing. Hey, wise guy. You did it. Blur? The Sigma's gone. Poor Blur. Well, he wasn't the nicest guy in the world. But even he doesn't deserve that. Uh, I was wrong about Blur. He came through for the team in the end. He truly fulfilled the Rescuebot pledge to serve and protect. Uh, one more thing. How do you turn off this cloaking device? I think the explosion triggered it. Blur? Uh, wait, never mind. Nope, uh, I got it. I don't know whether to hug you or yell at you. Is there a third option? Yes, court martial for Grand Theft Spaceship. Hey, if I hadn't taken the ship, none of you would even be here. Feels good to help, doesn't it? I'm not sure. Never done it before. <laughs> if that's what I'm feeling, it's not bad. <laughs> You'll get used to it. So, think maybe I've earned another chance here? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I agree. But I have other plans for both Blur and Salvage. I have just learned what transpired. I am proud of you. Both of you. As I said, being a rescue bot is not a destiny, but a choice. I am glad you have made yours. Heatwave, you and your team have trained the new recruits well. Salvage and Blur have proven themselves fit to serve as rescue bots at another Earth location. What? Why? I don't they did just not see like one coming. So I guess this is goodbye. You two noobs don't get off that easily. I'll be checking in on you for some long distance supplemental training. Wow, something must be wrong with me. Cause uh, I'm actually looking forward to that. Good news, Chief. The effects of the CME have completely abated. The power station is about to come back online. We were just getting used to having you here. We go where we're needed, kid. We're rescue bots. And Cody, thanks for helping me earn this. All right, Poopsie. A little exercise for you, and then manicures for both of us. Ew. I wish you didn't always bury your toys, Poopsie. They get so... Ew. Here we go! Fetch! Okay, careful, Servo. There are people at the park, so only do what I tell you. 
It's not like when you were working with High Tide. Around humans, you need to act like a program robot. Follow my lead. Taking a robot dog for walkings? <laughs> That's silly, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't need to. <laughs> oh, no, Mrs. Lusky. We're just passing through. Rescue business. Automotive incident. Traffic delay increasing. Awaiting instructions. Robot, move the car to the curb, then fix the flat. I mean, he's programmed to. And it's not Jody, it's Cody. And so helpful, too! That's what you need, Poopsie. A robo dog of your own, in case of emergencies. Come along, Poopsie. Baby's had enough excitement for one day. And so has Mama. Thanks again, Jody. It's. Bye, Mrs. Lusky. Nice job, Servo. <laughs> and I think Poopsie likes you. Wish you guys could have seen him in action. He really saved the day, and the mayor's dog. He returned the rubber bone, too? Not a good idea. What was he supposed to do? Keep it? What Heatwave means is that this type of sentient behavior from Servo could threaten the undercover status for all of us, correct? Yeah, but without all the big words. If we have to act like metalheads, so does he. Cody explained that Servo's program for rescue. Anyway, something tells you Mrs. Lusky didn't think about it too hard. Maybe, but Heatwave and Chase's concerns are still on target. Servo shouldn't be seen acting on his own, unless it's a true emergency. It was, Dad. We couldn't just let the mayor's dog get run over. That is an emergency. An adorable, hairy little emergency. <laughs> Bottom line, from now on, out in public, you're a robot that acts only on command. Got that? <laughs> I know you can do it, buddy. Cody and I will help you. Pussy, come see! Your new diamond collar just arrived! We just love it, don't we? Yes, we do! Now let's get that nasty old one off. And in other news, what has four legs, changes flat tires, rescues dogs, and is the latest member of Griffin Rock's rescue team? Say hello and goodbye to Servo, the robotic mutt who just might be man's new best metallic friend. Mayor Lusky, please. You have to calm down so I... Calm down, nothing! I've been the victim of a heinous crime. Poopsie's new collar stolen right out of my home. Are you sure you didn't misplace it? 
I don't see why anyone would steal a dog collar. Because it's encrusted with 27 diamonds. That's why. It's worth more than, than your monthly salary. We'll get right on it. And I think I need a raise. Team, we have a 459 B&E. No way! An actual B&E? Um, what's a B&E? Breaking and entering. Specifically in that order. <sighs> You'll need to finish up on your own. Happy, but for now, we'll have to file this one under mission unaccomplished. Trying to find a missing dog collar in a town this size is about as easy as looking in Servo's mouth. Servo, what have you done? Chief Burns for the mayor. Yes, Mr. Alper, I'll hold. I can't believe it. We've been living with a thief under our noses this entire time. There has to be an explanation. So what exactly have you two been teaching him anyhow? Just to act like a robot. Sure didn't teach him to steal or, or even bury things like Earth Dogs do. Would you care to make a statement? Though I must warn you, anything you bark or beep can and will be held against you. Now hang on there, Sherlocks. Just because he had the collar doesn't mean he stole the collar. In fact, he's got a watertight alibi. That's right. He was helping you with the drain pipe when the call came in. And Servo was with Cody and me the whole morning before that. So he's not guilty. I'm so relieved. Yes, if you could just leave word with the mayor that the stolen item has been recovered, thanks. I bet what happened was Servo got out and caught the thief. Or maybe he found the collar somewhere and thought bearing it was the best way to keep it safe. Whatever the case, Servo was still acting on his own. If he can't learn to stop that behavior and does something to expose the team's secret, well, <clears throat> he might be better off back with High Tide. I know he'd take good care of you, but I'd miss you, boy. <coughs> Excellent work, boys! And the thief is behind bars, I take it? Uh, well, we, uh, found the collar on the ground. Uh, Perp probably just chucked it when he saw us on patrol. Well, oh, yes! That's exactly what happened. Just like Kate said. And he wouldn't lie, because Kate is as honest as- <clears throat> Him. We'll keep looking for the thief, Mayor Lusky. to only following our commands. That'll convince other humans that you're just another robot. Watch us. Robot, touch your head. Robot, take two steps back. Now take two steps forward. Robot, take two steps forward. See? He obeys only when I say robot. With you, the command will be bot dog. Got it? Yeah, I know. It's embarrassing, but you get used to it. Ready? Fetch! Good servo. Way to pay attention. Okay, bot dog, fetch!
Robot, throw. Sorry. Bot dog, fetch. piece of the puzzle. Oh, finally, our Tyrannosaurus skeleton will be complete. Bring it inside. Where could he have gone? Dog, where are you? <laughs> ah, what have you done? <laughs> Did you happen to see a... It was that Robo-Dog, the one on the news. He destroyed our display. I'm sure he didn't. This was the mayor's pet project. Oh, wait till he hears about this. I can't believe Servo would do this. We have to find him. He could be anywhere by now. Let's head back to the firehouse. We can use the Energon tracker. I know. Mr. Mayor, I I'm sure it's just a glitch in the dog's programming. We are working on it, and nothing like this will ever happen again. I promise. <sighs> what happened? The rest of us are out on a rescue, so you just let him run wild? No, he, he was doing really well. Then all of a sudden, he just ran away. Up till now, Servo's been really helpful. Right. Any tool you need, he's got it. And he's a zillion times better than a real dog. We don't have to feed him or... Servo is not a pet. He's a Cybertronian helper bot, and right now he's not helping. Indeed, his actions are putting us all in jeopardy. But... No buts. He's not more important than the team. And if he doesn't get that... There, that's his Energon signal. He just turned on Waverly, headed toward the zoo. Maybe he just wants to see the monkeys. I'm sure he's not doing anything wrong. Uh, Dad, calls have been coming in nonstop. And there is some security footage you might want to see. I'm sorry, son. I think you know what this means. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, that can't be good. <laughs> Watch and learn, partner. Case and cage closed. Not quite. We still need to round up Servo. Uh, Dad? Mayor's on the phone. I'll patch him through. My, my dinosaur display? Mayhem downtown? I want that Robomont off my island by morning! Where have you been hiding, you little rascal? I thought you'd run off again. Come to Mama. Ew. I don't even want to touch this filthy old thing. Uh, HB, take this out of the trash, please. Uh, always with it. Oh, don't you look precious. Stay here. Mom is getting her camera. What? What's gotten into that dog? Poopsie! No! Wait! Eat your oh. Found you. Gotcha, Servo. Your reign of terror is over. How's the cleanup going, son? So far, we have a destroyed fruit stand, broken plate glass, a ruined wedding cake, and a very upset carpenter. Copy that. Cody's been looking through video. Maybe he spotted some damage we missed. No, something more important. Dad, look. All the damage was because of Mrs. Lusky's dog. Servo was trying to protect her all along, and rescuing people at the same time. Well, what do you know? His motives were clearly good, son, but he was still acting on his own, and we can't have that. But, Dad, you said yourself, unless it's an emergency, and these were all emergencies. He was just doing his job. You're right. I gave you those orders myself, didn't I, boy? <laughs> emergency dispatch. Yes, Mrs. Lusky. Oh, I'm glad you called. It seems that your dog... Oh, is that so? All right, well, we'll look into it. Poopsie's missing again. And the mayor, too, but uh, somehow that didn't seem as urgent. She says he went to take some trash out and never came back. All the automated garbage trucks have a video feed. I can tap in and see if it picked up anything. It picked up something, all right. The mayor and Poopsie. Rescue team, city dump, code red. That out, team. The scrap master. Thank goodness I found it. <laughs> Thanks to the Burns family, we're safe and sound. Thanks to Servo. He's been keeping a good eye on your dog. We, uh, programmed him that way. Any chance you might change your mind about getting rid of him? Um, uh, it, Mr. Mayor? Get rid of it? I, I can't believe you'd even consider it! <clears throat> Let's face it, this is the dog that's out of control. Did you hear that, Cody? Sure did. Noble! Ah, uh, Poopsie! Hey, come back here! Stop! You so missed your chance, Dad. Should have asked him for a raise. So, the mayor's on board. What do you think, Heatwave? 
I say we return Servo to where he belongs. The firehouse. <laughs> 